Hello, Internet. Uh, welcome to episode 10, which is the final episode in mentoring session on C++. I hope you have enjoyed uh, all the other nine episodes whose recording is also available on my YouTube channel. And in this particular uh, set of uh, uh, episode, we are going to talk about that, how you can get started with the online judge and uh, how you can you know, utilize it for building up the profile and then preparing for the placement uh, related programming tests. So in the meantime, we just get started. Uh, can somebody confirm me? uh that is the audio and video is okay uh if yes we can proceed with that and also the format will be same like we will be following with the uh you know some set of uh, you know slides which i have and some demonstration and once we are done with our basic discussion we uh we can take your queries with in the in between also you can put the uh, queries in your comment section or chat section we can have uh, that discussion uh, whenever, if it is required during the uh, particular you know, uh, uh, session discussion or just after the session discussion, right? So uh, starting with the, the uh, particular review as we always go with the format. So within the episode nine, what we have tried to cover uh, and discuss about is the file handling stuff and the exception handling. So when, when you talk about the file handling, so what exactly we uh, discussed about it, that what is the class hierarchy? Right, that how iOS as a base class goes towards uh, go and you know make a derived class corresponding to the console input output and uh, the relevant uh, uh, file related input output uh, uh, functionality. Right, so that is what we discussed about the hierarchy part. Then we discussed about how OS, OS stream, IF stream, and F stream classes are being utilized for the purpose of uh, working with the file handling. Apart from this, we have also discussed about that what are the different kind of flags which can be used for the corresponding uh, you know, operations on the file. So it may be uh, appending in the file, truncating the file, or you may be overwriting a particular file, or you might be reading from the beginning or the end or from the current uh, position and uh, uh, other stuffs. So uh, once we were uh, done uh, with the certain file handling part, then we proceeded towards the exception at like we are actually we looked at that how try catch block can be used uh, to handle the different kind of logical error or runtime errors which may may occur and could lead to the termination of your program and we also discussed about the standard uh, exception library uh, which is available in uh, c++ uh, for providing a lot of different kind of predefined uh, uh, errors and catching them and then handling them in a way as you want for your procedure, right? So this is what we discussed in our previous uh, episode nine. Uh, great, love Kush uh, confirmed that sound is good, so that's great. Uh, so in episode 10, our basic objective is to go through the best practices that we can go for the online judge. I'll show you some of the uh, platforms which you, which you can proceed with and uh, I, I will also share that how the portfolio can be built up what are what are the different step-by-step -step procedures that that you can certainly do for yourself because the building up the portfolio uh, definitely uh, takes time right recruiter wants someone who uh, someone who has a you know, extensive uh, knowledge uh, with respect to particular programming language right so you, this this portfolio build up thing takes time so we'll be looking at different kind of steps that can be uh, followed in this particular case right so first let's understand that what exactly is an online judge if anyone of you have uh, practiced on hacker rank hacker earth then you must have seen that uh, there there is some sort of window which we have uh, where we go and type in uh, our particular set of code and that that gets executed. So online judge is basically an online system to test programs in the programming contests, right? So when I say programming contest, it could be some sort of problem statement which has been given to you and corresponding to that particular problem statement, you have to write a piece of code, right? Uh, generally, we get a help in writing the piece of code uh, while practicing, but during the placement uh, uh, programming test, it's not available, right? So we need to have an understanding of the program uh, program uh, programming that we are trying to work, work upon. So this online judge basically is an online system which tests your, pro, uh, your program in the programming contest, and they are also used to practice for such contest. The system can compile and execute. 
your code right so it's it's more or less kind of compiler which works at the background of that particular portal and it tests your code with a pre constructed data right so there are pre -con when when we say pre constructed data i i uh, must always say that there must be some kind of test cases that are going to be run on your particular program and when whenever uh, you run your program you actually find that certain certain test cases are failed or passed if if you might have you know worked upon it i'll show you uh, what what sort of uh, uh, things we have uh, in that particular part so online judge is all about this you you submit a program that program gets compiled and executed and then tested against certain kind of test cases that is uh, there for you so let me show you one of the uh, you know example so I have actually well builded up a profile on Hacker Earth. So this is what I have. Uh, this is a profile which is uh, going to be opened. OK, so I opened Hacker Rank. Uh, anyways, we, I can open this as well. So I can go to this login, and then I go to login again. Oh, great. So if, if I made some confusion, so by default, when you go to the uh, you know, hacker rank, there are two ways for companies and for developers. So you always have to go for the developer sign up and code. Once you go to this particular part, it will take you to this particular thing. Either you have to sign up or you have to log in, right? So there must be uh, some sort of login which you have. So I have actually logged in by using my Gmail account, right? So that is what it is going to get authenticated with. Uh, corresponding to my login stuffs, right? So you can do that as well for, for your particular part, right? So this is how the dashboard of this particular you know, hacker rank may look like. And similar, similarly, Hacker Earth, uh, you can say uh, the uh, Code Chef, Code Forces, they have almost similar kind of stuffs. They have practice, they have com uh, compete. They have some kind of leaderboard with, uh, with, uh, with your profile, right? If you are practicing, the leaderboard will, will be generated. They must be having some sort of, you know, uh, contest or practice, uh, you know, problems to work around. So all these are, are having almost similar kind of, uh, you know, uh, parts. So this is uh, this is what is the basic stuff. So let me take you to the you know C plus plus side because. This that is what we were studying uh, during our particular part. So every particular programming uh, practice challenge starts with some kind of uh, solving a solving a particular problem. So it's a hello world with C plus plus, right? So when you look at a particular set of uh, you know online judge, so it's 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 a basic portal where the online judge comes in. So what do you get? You get certain set of tabs and you get a prob uh, problem statement for you, right? So what it says that th this is a simple challenge to help you practice. Uh, printing to standard output you may also want to compete solve me first uh, whatever the objective they wanted to have and then we are starting out by printing the most famous computing phrase that is the hello world by the standard out uh, output cons uh, console and the input format what it says now these are some of the things which you should always look at very carefully because on online judge uh, if if I show you the other uh, part again, so online judge is an online system to test programs in programming contest, and they are used to practice for such contests as well. The system can compile and execute your code, and test your code with pre-constructed data. So when when you talk about this particular part, the system can compile and execute your code, but it will be testing your code with pre-constructed data, right? So then. That means you have to look around this particular part, right? Input format, do, you do not need to read any input for this particular challenge. That means no, no C in re, is required. Make sure for that. And output should print exactly this particular phrase, right? That is hello world in output. So sample output should be like this. So whenever whenever you are reading the problem, you should always you know, put your uh, you know, concentration on what is the input format, what is the output format, and what uh, sort of sample output it is going to produce from that particular uh, uh, compilation. Now, next thing, I'm going towards the particular section where you are going to write the code. Now, here at the top of this ed editor, or maybe on the side of the editor, if you are taking part in a contest or something, if you are not very specific toward the language uh, practice, then you have to choose the language from this particular uh, 
drop down right so c plus plus by default we are practicing that is why it is only showing us these two versions of the c plus plus so i'm going with the basic so you can see it has already provided you certain set of code and it has already provided you a particular printf statement so it is c plus plus so we can simply write in fact c plus plus also supports the printf for formatting purposes but if we want we can you know, simply uh, uh, comment this and then we can simply write c out that we already know okay so we are going to write hello comma world and exc exclamation sign so this is what is there for me and right now because i'm not going to save anything now once the code is written as per the specified input or output format whatever is required or whatever the algorithm you wanted to you know bring on then you have to first run your code okay so there is uh, there is a particular button which is going to have a run your code and once you run your code it will compile it and then it will show you that what is the basic output it shows on hacker rank it's a, it's a very good thing it shows you what has been given as an input and what is the output given on the standard output by your program and what was the expected output that should be uh, displayed right and once this particular sample test case is uh, is okay is is passed we call it simply call it passed test case then you can simply submit so there are two stages in any online judge for first part you have to run your code and test is it working in a way it should be in that particular case one or two test cases will be performed once you are confirmed that your test cases are being uh, been uh, running properly then you have to actually click on the submit code button and then your test case again some other set of test cases will be executing and that brings you the uh, particular set of output in terms of that either your test case has been passed then it means congratulations you can move to the next problem statement or whatever the points are supposed to be given to you on the basis of this particular submission they will be given to you or otherwise if the test cases are failed then you have to go back and see in your code that what exactly is being required so let me take you to a, one one more example uh, that might give you a, a better idea that what could be uh, the particular set of you know output we require so this is the for loop pro problem statement which we have and then we have a particular you know editor window where we wanted to write our pro pro uh, particular pro uh, problem now here you can simply see that we have certain problem statement which has been given so it says a for loop is a programming language statement which allows you to write a code this is the simple uh, expression which they have given and then what expression does it gives uh, what expression uh, does it is going to work for that is also explained here because this is a practice problem and it also shows you show you some some sort of syntax right if if it is not a practice problem you will be given certain set of problem here right uh, in 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 the terms of a phrase or paragraph or something like that right then the input format now you will be given two positive numbers a and b this is the input which is going to be there for your program right and uh, and a is less than or equal to b separated by a new line okay so we we have this particular constant constant which has been given right so that means we can expect two inputs from the particular uh, set of input standard input which is going to be given and the output format is that for each integer n in the interval a to b right so that means we are this is a and b is a interval okay if one uh, if n is between 1 and n then print the english representation of it in a uh, lower case that is 1 for 1 or 2 for 2 and so on so this is what is going supposed to be shown if the particular n is between 1 and 9 if n is greater than 9 it will uh, print you print the even if it if the if uh, n is greater than 9 and if it is odd then print odd will be uh, uh, provided on the standard output right so the sample input they have given is like this and the sample output they have given like is this okay so this is what is supposed to be coded in inside this particular uh, set of uh, uh, editor so what we know is that there are two c ints so c ints that means i'm expecting this into two variables that is 
int a b. So there are two variables which we are expecting. So a and c in b. Okay, so that is what I have you know gone through. So two in, in uh, two particular variables, and we are expecting that a is less than or equals to b. So we might also put this particular constraint, but they haven't given us any constraint corresponding to it. So we we might not uh, put it right now. Okay, then it says for each integer n in interval a and b. So that means the for loop will get started. It says between the interval, right? So for I'm stating, let's say int n, which is going to start from a and n, which is going to be uh, what it says, the constraint says uh, n, each integer n in the interval a and b. So I can simply say n is less than or equals to b and then n plus plus. Okay, so this is what I have. So the first constraint, uh, our first uh, implementation has been done that for each integer n in the interval of a and b that has been implemented then if n is between 1 and 9 right is equivalent or between 1 and 9 then we should be printing the particular set of uh, corresponding word right so English translation for that particular word okay so in that particular case what I'm going to have is I may have a uh, you know switch because I know it's it's uh, a particular constant which I'm going to uh, work on. Now this is what you have to decide on your language uh, related thing, right? So switch is there, and then corresponding to that, what I can do is I can create case one, and then I can have case two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, four, I have missed four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if this is the case, what I have to do is I have to go for C out. Uh, I'm, I'm going to print one. Now that I need to see, is it in capital letter or is it in lower letter? It's all in lower letter. So I'm going to put it in uh, lowercase one, and then, and then I put a break. So if you remember from the switch, uh, uh, switch uh, episode, you must be aware about that break is very, very important, right? So TWO, then we got uh, our three. So let me be very quick. I'll try to be as quick as I can. So another one, another one, another one, another one, another one, and let's great. So if this is the case, so three up to three we have done, then we have four, then we have five, then we have six. So this is the simplest problem which we are trying to solve. It might be a bit of lengthy, eight and nine, right? So till now we have cap, uh, captured the first case that is saying that the n if it is from one to nine, it should be printing as the number. If it is greater than nine, then it should be printing even if the number is even. Otherwise, it should be printing odd. So for that, what we can do is we can go for a default, right? Within this, what we can look at is if now expression which I'm going to put here is n. Okay. So here, if or maybe I can say n. If it is uh, divided by uh, two, right? And then if it is equivalent to zero, because we are looking at the reminder, I'm going to use a ternary operator here. Okay. So then C out. I might not be sure C out work here. I have never used anyways. C out will not work. So I have to use uh, if else condition only. So I'm putting up if, and then here I'm going to put C out. And uh, because it's, it's divisible, so even. Otherwise, what we are going to have is, we are going to have an else section that it's a odd, right? 
So this is how we can write our pro program uh, corresponding to that particular part. So as per the constraints, we have tried to work it around. Okay. So when we are right. Uh, we have written this particular set of piece of code. We are going to run this particular code. Oh, it says a, a, a particular error we have. So I think we have made certain errors. So switch. OK. So let me run this particular thing again. All right, so the processing has been done, and the sample case 0, it says the wrong answers. Standard input is 8 and 11. Output it shows is 8, 9, even, and odd. My output is displaying me this, whereas expected output is 8, 9, even, and odd. So this is because we have not did a flush here. So we have to write endl after every uh, Writing right, so there might be multiple uh, cases they they might be testing out in terms of for loop, right? So we are going to have this endl at every place, and at last, this is what we have. Oh, I'm very sorry. I it, it's a, it's a habit to me that whenever I write a code, I just simply press uh, Control S, whereas this is uh, not applicable over here. Now you can see while you know, writing this particular logic and put, uh, pressing this run code is going to test a, you know, test a simple test case. And then, then once I am satisfied this, with this particular part, I can simply click on the submit code and it can do certain another set of test cases to run on that particular piece of code. And then it can actually show you that is it, is it uh, uh, a hit on all the, all the test cases or you missed any of the test cases. So if you missed any of the test cases, you can actually have go back to the code and then you can rewrite or rephrase your uh, you know pr program corresponding to it so this is what is there in your online judge right so you have to look into the input format what exactly it is going to give you you have to look at the output format what exact what should you should be displaying on the on the particular output and it shows you the sample input and sample output so this actually gives you a lot of idea about it okay so let's look at the other tabs quick, very quickly. So submissions are basically corresponding to the user itself. How many submissions have been done? Then leaderboard is corresponding to that. Where do you stand in solving that particular problem? Right. This is this is where you should be, you know, looking for because this this particular leaderboard is actually going to build up your portfolio. Right. Uh, there there could be different kind of uh, filters which you can uh, which you can take in. Then there is a discussion tab. Discussion tab allows allows you to have discussion with the community who has tried to solve that particular problem, and they might have you know, a different viewpoint to solve that particular problem. What uh, in comparison to what you have uh, in your viewpoint? So it's it's always 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 recommended that you go and look at the discussion before you actually go for the editor editorial. Right? For practice problems, I'm telling you this before going to editorial, you should first go to discussions and then try to solve your problem if you are facing any kind of challenges in solving the problem. And if, if still you wanted to see that what exactly is the code, now editorial is always being written by the person, uh, most of the time written by the person who has actually created that particular problem statement. And this is what you can actually you know, work it around. Now, this particular problem has another set of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can see the another set of algorithm which can be utilized corresponding to it. So this is what is there in the editorial part. So maybe after submission and if your problem statement has been accepted, then if you go and look at the editorial, you will be able to find out that, OK, there is another way to do it to, to solve this particular problem. So this is how the online judges uh, and, and the platforms like this, uh, like HackerRank, HackerRank, they allows you to you know first thing practice. Uh, the problems and then you know testing your problems on various set of uh, you know test cases. Now, what could be the possible test cases? Let's say they might be checking your boundary value problems, right? You like like we were given the uh, range of A to B, right? And the N N is going to be between A and B value, right? So if if we if they want, they can put a particular check over there that if A is less than B, only then the further problem statement should be. Uh, proceeding so that constant was not provided so 
it it was simply you know uh, executing without any challenge so if the constraint was provided then you have to put it put that constraint so that could be one possible test case to test your pro particular problem uh, problem submission okay so this is what what uh, are the set of uh, different kind of uh, problems you have and there are certain uh, set of uh, parameters which uh, which these online judges might be looking at the time complexity the uh, space complexity that means how much memory you are using time co uh, space complexity is how much memory you are using and time complexity is how much computation time you are using for that for solving that particular problem so sometimes the constraints are also on the time complexity so easy constraint uh, this is this is the time complexity of big uh, big o notation where where whatever the number the maximum number we have that is what is the big o notation it has been given for this so this is the easiest one okay so uh, the problems can be of multiple types so this is how the online judge works for you now if you are working on a particular set of uh, you know a uh, set of building your portfolio then there are, there are, there are certain platform which you can go and register for the hacker rank hacker earth spodge code chef code forces and top coder these are some of the popular platforms which are there i always suggest uh, uh, my uh, students my my uh, workshop uh, attendees to start with the hacker rank and move move upwards maybe start with the hacker rank or hacker earth and then move upward toward the uh, toward the particular uh, portals like code chef code forces because actually these two or these three portals the code chef code forces and top coder is actually going to bring you to the uh, to the attention of the recruiters right because uh, even though hacker earth runs a lot of contest for for hiring purpose but the the portfolio which you build on code chef and code forces specifically because code forces is one of the benchmarked uh, online judge uh, which which is going to you know give the credibility to your skills when you participate in in their online contest and all that stuff so that is where you are going to you know outstand with from the other other people whereas code chef is the one platform which allows you to you know participate in in the long contests and short contest long contest is the one where you actually go and learn so contest is very very important we are going to look at these steps definitely so what are the steps to get started with so there are there are five basic steps that you should be you know doing the very first step you should be uh, very much very much uh, you know uh, pinpointed is to choose your programming language which programming language you wanted to work upon so we did uh, a very extensive uh mentoring session on 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 uh, c++ right there were nine sessions on c++ and we touched upon all the you know main topics important topics of of the c++ why we chose c++ 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 is one of the most most uh, uh compatible languages which are being there for the online judges it's very powerful it's it's its speed is very good in comparison to other programming languages like java or python you might also work uh, work in uh, in these online judges by by using python as well as java but i always recommend you should go for the c++ because the standard template library which has been provided with c++ and in fact online judges all judge also supports this so you, that allows you to you know utilize different kind of data structures and different kind of you know uh, pre written algorithms for your uh, for solving your problem statements right so the only thing is that you should be knowing about that okay which which particular set of data structure or which particular set of uh, pre builded or pre compiled algorithm shall i be using in my uh, in my you know program to solve this particular set of problem which is at hand so choosing a language is very very important i always recommend you start with c++ right so it it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of working on the problem statement second is learn the language it's very important to learn the basics so what what things you should be looking at the basics is something which is very very important what is the input output uh, related uh, statements what are the different kind of data types it supports what are the different kind of uh, you know uh, uh, programming control constructs it have right like we have for we have for, for simple for we have while and there is a 
another version of for where you can actually look at the range itself by using a colon statement right so we need not to use the three expressions we can also work on the two two basic expression where you specify the range and you specify the object here and then you can work around so you need to learn about the programming language in 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 very extensive way right so second step is to learn the language practice that particular language and for this i always believe hacker rank is the best place to start with then you should be moving on towards uh, the uh, hacker earth they have a very 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 good track named as code monk you should be you know uh, practicing the problem in that more prob problems you practice corresponding to a single concept maybe it's io maybe of its file handling maybe it's uh, related to data type maybe it's related to the control structures maybe it's related to the inheritance polymorphism so there are n number of concepts and there are there are a minimum of 10 to 15 problems which are there you should be solving corresponding to each once you go through all those problems you are actually going to have a very good control on the programming language you you will have a better understanding and then you will be very quick on you know writing the solutions for the problems which are there on the online judge right so that's very very important choose the language very wisely second is learn the language and third fail early and learn from your mistakes more test cases you fail more things you will be going to learn so i have shown you that there are already editorials which are being available corresponding to the problem statements which are there for the practice you should always always go and look at the editorial in the last place when you are saying that okay I cannot do it anymore. I have to go to the editorial and then see the problems, uh, prob solution to this particular problem, right? So, more you fail, more you try, um, you will get to know that, okay, why did you fail? What concept did you lack, right? So, identify that what mistake you have done. Let's say some test cases case was failing. You were not able to solve it out. You have seen in the editorial that that could be solved by using a uh, certain particular type and then you should always remember it right definitely when once you fail you will always remember it what exactly is the solution corresponding to it so that that is what is uh, what is uh, my suggestion as a third step and also play in group it will accelerate your learning it like if if i'm single handedly working on the problem statement and trying to solve it it might take a lot of time to solve first thing it might consume a, a a lot of diff, uh, energy from me in terms of reading this stuff right once you work in a group uh, everyone has a different mindset to solve a, a, a different problem right so when you are practicing i'm not talking about the concept uh, contests i'm talking about the practice problem so when you are working on a pra practice problem and if you are struck on some certain kind of test case you should be talking to your friend, right? You should be talking to someone in your group who is also like-minded, who is also solving that particular problem uh, statement or who, who might be working in a similar field. And you should be discussing that. What could be the possible solution to it? And this is, the, mind it, this is one of the best way uh, that you can reduce your time in terms of prepare, preparation and in terms of understanding the concepts from that particular prob, uh, programming language as well as solving a certain sort of uh, problem type okay so ev every individual problem is different on the online judge so every individual problem may have a different set of uh, uh, perspective to solve that so when you play in a group when you, when you discuss with other peers uh, who are also working in the same same uh, you know, uh, programming type of thing? You should be discussing with them, and then you should be trying to implement that particular part. It will accelerate your your learning. Next is four step: practice, practice, practice. As much as you can practice, as much as problems you can solve, that is the best part. More you solve the problems, more you are going to get the understanding of the work and. Uh, it it will speed up the uh, you know speed up your way to work out on the problem statements and you will be let's say you will be spending 30 minutes in the very first day and if you are on the 100th day and you have already always practiced at least 2 hours or at, at least two or three problem statements in a day you will be solving that in a 10 minutes or 15 minutes time so you will have your half your time for solving your problems because you know a lot of stuff now okay then 
Fifth step, once you are through with the practice, once you have solved majority of problem statements corresponding to the concepts, you should be going for the long contests. First, in the first place, you should be sitting for the long contest. Now, long contest could, contest could be from two to four weeks time, right? A lot of time, a long contest come on the code, uh, code chef. They are they give you very good problem statements to work on. They, they give you... You know, good good uh, practice of mind, and they give you a lot of uh, you know uh, competition in terms of learning new concepts. So you should be sitting in the long contest. You should be solving those problems, even if you are not able to solve in the initial stage. Maybe first one two contest, you might not be able to solve a, even a single problem, right? But you will learn from it, right? Once the contests are been over, and you go and read on the editorials or, or the discussion boards, you will be actually able to understand that how to solve that particular problem. And it's very, very important in that particular term that you should be knowing about that how you can solve this particular set of problems. So long contest is the first thing you should be going after. And then once you are through with the long contest, maybe you have, you have uh, you know, uh, uh, nailed two or three long contests. I'm not always saying that you should be able to solve all the problem statements. You might be solving two problem statements. That's okay. At least you you are getting the confidence. You are making your profile better from what you had last time, right? So long contest is the first priority. Short contest is the second priority because short contests are always from two to two to four hours uh, time period, right? So you have to solve the problem very quickly. Now until and unless you are not aware that how which or which particular set of algorithm can be implemented to these kind of problems right then it is very very difficult for you to you know uh, solve the short contest in the in that particular point of time and it sometimes shatter your confidence that i might not be able to work on it but long contests allow you to have and mind it everyone can work on any kind of problem statement they can solve it without any challenge the only point comes is practice practice and practice that is what you should be your motto should be right and you know, remember failure gives you learning it's not like it's a dead end it's it gives you learning right so that's very very important that you should participate in contest and actually it tells you that what others are also doing after the contest has been has been submitted you can actually see what other people have submitted their code and you can actually look at the top 10 people who have submitted their code and then you can learn from them so that is uh, one a uh, very important uh, you know, uh, step. So this is this is the five step you know, procedure that how you can build up your pro portfolio, how you can you know practice, strengthen your programming related skill by using these online judge and which platform to start with. As I have already mentioned, Hacker Rank is the best platform to start with for specific uh, programming language uh, related practice because it gives you different stages to work on, then you should be moving on to the Hacker Earth that gets you the uh, Code Monk. So let me show you what exactly is the Code Monk look like. Uh, hacker Earth. So Hacker Earth is this. I'm going to log in by using, again, I'm using my Gmail account. So login. And I can go with the Gmail itself. Great. So again, you can simply see that what is their challenges, practice, uh, practice, and companies, right? So companies is basically where the recruitment comes in uh, uh, for the contest. So this is the Code Monk which I'm talking about. So Code Monk actually allows you to, you know, have certain. Uh, stages so you start with the basic of programming then arrays and strings sorting searching stacks and queues number theory and all that stuff so more more you solve from these things uh, more you get to know about that what sort of algorithm is applicable on what sort of problems so if i open one of the uh, this would, uh, would on. very very uh, interesting names even so price Uh, 
Can somebody confirm? Uh, uh, is my audio and video is okay now? Uh, can somebody confirm? All right, so I presume that uh, the art, the audio and uh, video is okay, so you can see this. So the hacker uh, Earth code monk is uh, is used to you know, standard your concepts. Uh, apart from this, uh, the spods uh, is should be used for uh, the problem statement practice. It has an archive of a lot of problem statements, right? You should be, you know, practicing a lot of problems from uh, from that particular uh, portal. So let me show you the spots. All right. So this is Sphere Online Judge. So once I go to this particular online judge, what you are able to see is uh, that there are certain topics which are being given, right? And you can actually go through all those topics in, in your uh, own time so horrible queries is something which is there so discussion is provided corresponding to this particular part and uh, okay so this is what we have uh, in terms of the discussion uh, discussion section and the problem set archive is also being provided uh, at this particular pr uh, place so read this before posting and all that stuff so you can actually go and explore this particular uh, uh, portal sphere online judge for practicing the problem this is one of the best portal to look at the problem statements which are already been solved by a lot of uh, uh, different set of uh, you know uh, programmers uh, during the contest period and you can actually look at the problem statements so maybe a simple arithmetic problem statement you might be looking at and this is what is the problem statement which has been provided and then you can actually go and submit your solution. So there, there are n number of ways uh, or n number of problems which you can work upon by using this particular sphere online judge. So if you have, if you are very much serious about building up your portfolio, this is the place where you should be looking for the problem statements. And then you might be also looking at the particular set of discussions corresponding to those, uh, those problem statements. So once you are done with that, then you are ready for code safe and uh, code forces. I'm not. I'm not at all you know, asking you to not to go to Code Chef and Code Forces in the first step. You can go and directly you know, uh, start working on these platforms. They are very good platforms. They, uh, you, you will find a lot of good programmers there. You can get connected with them. You can have a networking with them. But, but you should always start with practicing the particular programming language. You should, you should always go for the basics of programming. Uh, understanding first and then start solving the problem and then you should start working on the contest part you know it, it's it's a continuous process so i always believe that it will take continuously uh, with with a dedicated effort uh, 6 months is the minimum time which you should spend on building up on, uh, building up your portfolio on any of these platforms right this will help you 
uh, to gather a lot of uh, different set of knowledge from different set of people by practicing on on these particular set of uh, on these particular set of uh, portals right so this is this is really 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 important right so what's next so once you are done with this particular part, so practice is always the key. I always believe that once once you start at the first, you might have a lot of confusions. You ha might have a lot of problems to solve at your hand. You might get uh, get irritated when the problems doesn't get solved. But keep on practicing, keep on pra practicing, and the day will come when when you have uh, you know the straight wire in your hand, right? So that that is what you have. Now, how do you? rate yourself right what what problem statements you should be ultimately preparing for so these are some set of uh, you know uh, concepts which i have mentioned one is the dynamic programming backtracking greedy algorithms sorting search or pathfinding network flow problems combinatorial problems geometrical problems i'm not asking you to you know get uh, get yourself uh, you know uh, expert in uh, solving all these set of uh, problems i'm you may you know directly refer to maybe first four maybe any any three any four uh, set of domains and you should be making yourself expert in that right you should be solving each individual problem statement which is related to these set of uh, uh, topics specifically dynamic programming greedy algorithms backtracking and sorting they are one of the best uh, domains to domains to uh, you know get expert in, and then you can look for the searching uh, and pathfinding, specifically uh, the uh, the routing algorithms which you learn in your networks, right? And network for problems that is another geometrical problems. A lot of graph related problems are there, so it's up to you which which way you want it to go for. It's very very important uh, uh, to get through all these things, right? Now there is one thing which I do not want to miss, and that is the portal named as Top Stock, right? This is one of the best portal uh, which you can follow uh, for uh, for a lot of different purposes, right? So let me show you uh, this. Yeah, so this is the this is the portal which I have uh, no, uh, opened for myself. So. By default, this top stock. Once you log in or register, you will be able to you know go through uh, your profile. So this is this is the basic dashboard which you have, and uh, there are certain set of uh, you know options which are given on this particular left hand side uh, thing, uh, this this left hand side menu which is uh, provided over there. And here, what of the interesting thing which you can get is the upcoming contest. So this is one of the you know uh, best place to search for a consolidated place to search for that which contest is going to be there on which particular date and which is in in the future right so well, how much duration it will be and what sort of uh, you know problems uh, a statement uh, might be expecting you might be expecting corresponding to it you want to set reminder it can set reminder for you apart from this you may also create a leaderboard by adding your own uh, you know, set of institutes or friends into your list, and you can see what they are practicing with. So, if we look at this particular user, uh, this particular user is actually practicing some of the problems. So, these are this is the status for that particular user, and you know, this this gives you a healthy competition kind of spirit. That okay, my friend has done this. I should also be working around this, and also. Uh, you may may uh, look at that okay which set of problem statement they they are working on right on which date how many problems they have solved right what problems they have already solved if you are facing any kind of problem in any kind of you uh, know in, uh, in any kind of contest or any kind of uh, particular uh, algorithm and your friend has already solved it you can actually go and ask him directly right so this actually allows you to you know go through uh, all the different kind of uh, uh, you know uh, problem statements and and your friends uh, progresses and trending problems is also uh, a new feature which has been added to this particular portal you can actually go through this particular set of problem and start solving them as well right so this is how you are able to you know be on the same track as the other people in the community once you follow the community you will be building up your portfolio in a right manner right and that portfolio is automatically going to bring the recruiters to you 
right? Because once you start sharing your portfolio on different uh, uh, different uh, social network sites, specifically the LinkedIn, this this portfolio is actually going to bring you an opportunity of of the interview and your you know maybe your interview process, and it will make make it a lot easier. Due to this COVID thing. A lot of uh, you know challenges are being faced by the freshers as well as the experienced people. Maybe maybe two or three years of experience the people who have. So this is the right time you should be start building uh, your portfolio on these platforms. If you are if you are a programmer and you wanted to you know work around the, the different uh, uh, you know scope areas, right? This will allow you to strengthen your own skills right and once you are there with the opportunity at your hand you will be able to grab it without any challenges right so this is what i have corresponding to your uh, prop, uh, your uh, particular you know online judge related thing there are certain resources which you should be following these are some of some set of resources which i have uh, there is a playlist from uh, steven uh, who has explained the competitive programming very well you should be you know you should be you know going and looking at that particular playlist it allows you to have a lot of understanding apart from this there is another uh, you know set of uh, uh, course which is available from the stanford university uh, it's again available online it is cs97 uh, SI, you should be, you know, following this course as well. There are certain books which you can follow. One is the Art of Programming Contest Tips and Tricks. Another is the uh, the Hitchhiker Guide to Computative Programming and the Algorithm Design Manual. So all these books are going to give you some insight on on the different set of uh, pro, uh, uh, programming statements, uh, algorithms, and all that stuff. So you should be following these these resources as well. So that is uh, there for your your particular part. So this is this is the way uh, how you can build up, up your profile for a particular set of you know path for the software programming job or maybe uh, maybe software developers job with Amazon, Google, or all the top brands who are actually looking for the you know competitive candidates. Right, even freshers get a lot of opportunities during this COVID. You will find a lot of success stories over LinkedIn who are following the similar path, building up their portfolio on these particular platforms, and then they get the opportunity to you know uh, get interviewed, and they they pass through with the with the you know, job offers at their hand. So this is what I have for this particular episode, and finally we are concluding our uh, series of mentoring on sessions on C plus plus. Hope you have liked this particular series. If you liked it, please share it with your friends and groups. I hope uh, this particular series will be beneficial for you in future as well. All the recordings for these particular set of uh, sessions, which we have done live uh, in last uh, 15 days, uh, they are all available on my channel. That is Superwits Academy. You can go and look for the uh, playlist named as Mentoring Sessions on C++. You can, you uh, know, uh, refer to that anytime uh, when you want. Uh, apart from this, uh, uh, as you can see, there is there is a you know, message scrolling at the bottom of the screen as well. So you can contact us at hello at the superbits.com to share your feedback. In case if you have any training requirement, you can actually you know uh, send us uh, the request for Python, Java, C, C++ programming, or maybe the databases related and the machine learning related uh, training, right? So it can be done in groups. It can be done in the individual uh, uh, attention as well. So uh, that's it for our, our particular session. And at the end, I again you know uh, appeal you to subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Superwits Academy. And do not forget to press the bell icon. It will uh, help you to get the notification whenever I plan some new live sessions uh, sessions on uh, latest technology trends, or maybe I upload certain video on my YouTube channel. So thank you very much uh, for joining in, for sustaining uh, till the episode 10. And uh, uh, hope to see you again for another set of series that we might be floating in upcoming weeks. So thank you very much. Bye-bye, internet. See you again.